here we go. I've got my little mill up and running uh, and back three is ready to go. Uh, I've got my flash drive plugged into the computer with the new codes on so we'll start off by loading the code which is very easily done. Come up here to file so we open file, load G code and double click on the first file we want in and there it is, it's into Mac 3. So the next, next job we need to do now is to find the zero or the start of the program and our piece of work. Now I want to make the zero zero this hole in the middle here and I'm going to do that with that six millimeter three flute end mill. Now what you need to do is have some sort of datum point on your, your, your fixture. Now the datum point is normally the this corner, it can either be this corner of the jaw or this corner of the jaw here on a milling machine. So we're going to make this corner here our datum point in relation to our material. So now we're going to find the zero zero point of our start of our piece of work which is that hole there or we're going to zero off that hole. So I'm using my pendant here to control the CNC mill. Bring it down. Okay, so now I can reset the zero point in the X and Y after finding the center of that hole. So now we're going to find the Z and to do that we're just going to use a piece of paper. Okay, so I've just taken the tool out of the hole and off to one side. And I'm just going to bring the tool down slowly. Down, not up. <laughs> Just move the paper until it just grabs there. So now I can set the Z0, which is simply done just by pressing that. So now we have the X, Y, and Z zeroed and we shall be able to run our code. So I'm just going to pick the tool up off that material now like so. Remove the bit of paper and I'm going to be using flood coolant. I'm sure a lot of you are going to tell me, ah you, you, you had the wrong file in there and you're absolutely right. I've just changed the file now to a pocket Okay, you'll notice it's the pocket one. It really doesn't matter, the zero zero doesn't change uh, because I did it with the correct tool. So uh, we all make slip ups now and again. <laughs> Trying to be camera operator and light operator and operate the machine as well. So we've put that right. So we are going to be running flood coolant. So first of all, we're going to see whether the Flood cooler is going in the right place, so we'll turn that on. There, like that. Somehow. Okay, so the flood coolant is there not only to cool the tool and the material, but it's also there to flush the chips away because they're very, very small chips. So I'm going to shut this door now because it's going to get 
Now it's going to splash all over the place and I have to start this up manually. Okay, so that was up one. Incidentally, um, if you want to not use a, a pendant, it's fine. You can just use a keyboard uh, to go up in the Z. Just press uh, nine. That'll take you up. Uh, three is down. Four, X across that way. Six, X across that way. 8, Y, back that way, 2, Y, back towards you. So you, you, know, you have full control on the keypad as well. So let's just get rid of that material, waste material. I'll actually blow it off a bit. So you can have a better look. bring you in just for a better look. Look at that. Absolutely perfect. Perfectly cut. So that was done very very conservatively and uh, here's the slug. And you can notice that uh, in, in the last uh, video I did show you how to construct the tool paths for doing something like this and um, we did leave a tab on it but uh, you know the tab wasn't actually thick enough it was just a token tab we'll call it so uh, anyway it's a perfectly cut out uh, hole which is what we required so what I'm going to do now is I, I'm going to run all the parts for cutting this pocket uh, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll spot the holes and because we are using this corner of this vice here, it is very repeatable. In other words, I can guarantee that within a few thousandths of an inch, I can place the material into the same area and reproduce this pocket then, or hole cutout, in exactly the same place on each of the parts. I just thought I would show you this. Um, because it's not normally shown on any YouTube videos that I've seen anyway. Uh, I'm just going to change this ER32 collet chuck to a normal standard chuck to do uh, drilling. So I've actually I only just thought of this so I've already uh, undone the taper here which just means slackening this nut off and just whacking the top here with a hammer. That comes out. This is the new arbor then. So you take this one off and this is a standard type of uh, drill chuck. And then this goes up in here and this is a, a Morse taper. Put three Morse taper I think and then you start it in there like that and push it up very very firmly and it's it's there to stay taper to taper sort of fit but to hold it there to make sure it doesn't come undone you put this nut on like this and there's a little keyway inside here and I just put that Allen key in there just to lock it and then you just tighten this up to pull the there you go no need to do it any tighter than that, and then that's how to change to a normal chuck.
break from what we have been doing for a little bit of tuition uh, on Mac 3 and using a CNC milling machine. If you have, please press like and subscribe. And if you like my videos and like what you see, you may consider becoming a patron. Patron information is below this video in the video description area. That would be a great help because it's the patrons behind this channel that allows me to bring videos like this to you. There's also a Curveco discount code in the same area for 5% across the board and there is also a Fusion 360 discount code of 20% if you have to purchase it for a business, business hobby or whatever. So thank you for joining me and I hope you join me for the next thrilling episode <laughs> of manufacturing this CNC router. So it's bye for now.